in this video we'll be upgrading our NES version from 7 to 8, our Ionic capacitor version from 2 to 3, and also our Angular version 11 to 12. So I've actually already done the upgrades, but I'm just going to have a quick video to summarize everything that's needed to upgrade. So one of the first things you want to install is this npm uh, install dash g npm dash check dash updates package and we want it globally because we'll be using it quite frequently for our updates it's really handy so basically after you install that package here if you're on version 7 of nest.js and you want to upgrade to version 8 what you can do is you can just simply run this command here npm install dash g at nest.js slash cli they'll upgrade on your local machine from nest, nest version 7 to the latest which is currently 8 now one thing you might want to do is you might want to have a look at any of your outdated packages so you can just run this npm outdated here and I'm not expecting anything to be here because I've just updated the um, everything so we get nothing returned here and basically what you can do here is you can run this command here nest space update space dash f dash t latest now what this will do is the dash t latest that lets you download the latest type and the dash f is a force command and by default the nest update updates the version but we want to actually upgrade to the latest version so 7 to 8 so you can go ahead and you can run that command there so assuming you have installed the npm check updates package you can run ncu and that will show you the packages and the versions that you need to update and then you can run an ncu-u and they'll upgrade all of the packages to the latest and that will be displayed in the package JSON and then after that you can just run an npm i so that should be enough to upgrade from angular uh, from nest version 7 to 8 um, assuming you know you have the same folder structure and everything as uh, I've had in LinkedIn. You may have some other dependencies and other issues. Uh, please don't post them to me. Now, in the LinkedIn folder, in the front end uh, of our application, uh, we want to upgrade from Angular version 11 to 12. So we also want to get the latest version of Ionic. So you can just run npm install d at Ionic slash CLI. Now this hasn't changed at all. Uh, only the uh, minor versions um, and we've also want to run an npm install dash d at angular slash cli assuming we want the latest version on our machine which we probably will and then we can just run an ncu dash u and that will do all of the upgrades for us now you can use the angular um, there's an angular page and that's to upgrade the version and they have you can select which version you're on and if you've got a basic app and if you use annual material and stuff like that um, so if you're jumping you know multiple versions or you need to upgrade multiple versions of angular uh, and you got a complicated app uh, you're not going to be in for a fun time uh, please don't post uh, any comments asking me to help because I won't um, that's just something you have to suffer through alone um, it's probably one of the downsides of node um, based packaging is that when you have large complicated apps with lots of dependencies lots of things that depend on other things can break uh, especially if you have any major version breaking changes or anything like that so it's just a suggestion would be to upgrade one version at a time rather than jumping versions uh, change make the changes 
um, as needed and um, yeah just iterate from there um, so for our case we're in luck because things are quite simple here um, we're just upgrading version 11 to 12 and we don't have too many dependencies or anything like that so that's another reason why you wouldn't want um, to just be installing dependencies uh, every time you want something sometimes it's better off just to spend a little bit of time just to write some code that will achieve the same thing one you reduce the bundle size because you only have so many dependencies need to be installed but also when it comes to upgrading uh, particularly if you're on an enterprise application that's complicated and large um, you know you'll save yourself the headache but we're in luck because uh, things are quite simple for our application here so we can just run an npm i and now we install our application now there was a breaking change in the um, capacitor version so if we look in our LinkedIn um, package.json here you can see that we've upgraded to version 12 from 11 and if you don't want to go through all these steps I've posted it on github so you can just you know clone the repo or whatever you want to do um, but we can see that we're on version 12 of angular and we've got the latest version of TypeScript and everything else for that matter so one thing we'll note here is if we look at capacitor uh, if I can find it I'll just search for it we're on version 3 now um, so what it's doing is it for its plugins uh, you can just install them separately so you might want to go ahead and run an npm install at capacitor slash storage because I'm using the storage as you know and you can also go ahead and you can run npm install at capacitor slash splash screen now the reason we've got this one here is because the capacitor config.json file this can now be deleted and you can see the capacitor.config has been upgraded to a TypeScript and for a reference type we're referencing this at capacitor slash splash screen so that's where we need to install that uh, you know you import the capacitor config from capacitor CLI and you export the config um, this one here is pretty basic it just has the type of capacitor config you give it the same app ID and app name as in the previous uh, configuration file and we have a web dir of build and then we just specify our plugins here and if you had more you could add the reference types here and then the particular thing that we're plugging that we need to import here so these are external uh, we're still related to capacitor um, but you need to bring them in now the only breaking change that's happened in capacitor that we need to actually change in our code through these upgrades were is if I just search for uh, storage here and I look for the angular stuff we can see with before we're importing plugins from capacitor uh, core I think it was or plugins and basically we just import each individual plugin that we need so I think this is just an optimization to get less into our file than we need so we're using this syntax here so previously I've had the um, storage it was plugins dot storage I just removed the plugins dot from this file along with wherever else it was used and I was only used in about five places or so and that is pretty much wraps up the upgrades so one thing we want to do is we just want to check things are working so let's just run an npm run uh, yeah run start dev and I'll also run an ionic serve
and we'll just wait for things to load. If it's the first time, it might just take a little while because you've upgraded the version and it needs to do all the pre-compiling. Um, so the first compile is usually a little longer. So I'm just going to pause the video and start it when it finishes loading. And we can see that the application is still working here. Let's just post something in here. Hi and then delete it so everything appears to be working as it was. We'll just check the console. Um, it was just missing this one image here, but other than that, that's because it's got deleted from the system, but um, it's, so it's still looking at something, but that wouldn't normally be occurring. So yeah, that's how you can upgrade your Nest version seven to eight, Angular version 11 to 12, and also fix any um, of the breaking changes with Ionic and in particular capacitor from 2 to 3 with the plugins and how they're used. So I know this was a quicker video than usual. It's not, uh, I didn't, I, I, I showed you all the steps, but I didn't, uh, you know, wait for each of the commands to run. Uh, and that's just simply because I recorded the video uh, and I recorded the wrong screen. So everything was already done um, so yeah um, you can always just you know get it from the repo or you know you can just follow along with the steps they're, they're pretty much the exact same as what I was uh, recorded in the previous video uh, other than you know just seeing the loaders load and stuff like that um, so yeah thanks so much for watching in the next video I'll probably take a look at some error handling and some testing later on and then I might even do another feature on the chat application with WebSockets and stuff like that. So if that's something you're interested please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Bye.